Dr. Albina Palidemai is a Dean of Faculty at the Rochester Institute of Technology Kosovo campus, as well as a co-founder and co-director of the RIT Kosovo Research Center for Human Rights. She's a clinical psychologist trained in community mental health and interventions with over a decade long experience in migrant and refugee mental health, human rights, ethnic identity, human trafficking, and public and global health. Her projects focus primarily on the Balkans, European Union, and United States, while her work has been published by various international publishers. Outside of academia, Dr. Balidemai has served as a consultant for several international organizations. It is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Albina Balidemai to our session today. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, today I will be talking about um, intergenerational trauma and complex trauma in Kosovo um, through the ecological perspective. Um, this study is part of a year-long um, scoping review that I have conducted um, through uh, Yale University um, as part um, of being uh, a research um, fellow. This study, the, the, the presentation today is um, part one of the study. Uh, this will be a work in, in progress. Um, towards the end, I will discuss a little bit about what the second part will entail. Um, I will talk about the significant, why the study is very important. Uh, I will do a brief overview of the country, the context um, of Kosovo uh, and some demographics um, and why it is important that we really understand the intergenerational trauma, especially in the context um, of the Balkans. Why, why study intergenerational um, trauma in the Balkans? Um, so throughout my research, and as I was trying to find uh, materials to, to conduct the study and to put together um, the study, uh, one thing that I came across continuously is that there's very limited um, shared knowledge on the topic. Um, so the goal for me here was, in this part one, was to assemble um, some type of a timeline overview uh, of, of international uh, intergenerational trauma-based uh, on existing research uh, in Kosovo, uh, but also to better, and this was done, this is done with the aim to better understand how Kosovars reflect um, on their parents, grandparents, or guardians' traumas and experiences, but also to gain awareness um, of what does this mean in the context of their own families and, and, and community as a whole. Um, but ultimately, the main purpose um, of, of this study was to find common themes, to find the main themes uh, that translate throughout generations and to put them into a context. And um, I chose uh, to look at this through the ecological logical systems um, approach. Um, so I do want to emphasize that the study only focused um, uh, in the Kosovo population um, at this point. Um, and the studies that I was able to find to do the systematic review mainly uh, focused on um, heterosexual couples and, and families um, at this point. Intergenerational trauma as a, as a phenomenon refers to the emotional and psychological wounding that is transmitted through uh, generations. And it really involves multiple layers of traumatic experiences that are applied and shared um, throughout different um, ethnic groups. Um, in order to fully understand intergenerational trauma uh, in general, but specifically in the context um, of Kosovo, uh, we need to better understand uh, the history, the experience and observations um, that have happened, especially in the, maybe in the last um, century. There are epigenic studies that find correlations between prenatal and preconception trauma in this study, I didn't really focus too much on this side, although, although I find it very um, interesting. And studies here acknowledge that in addition to epigenics, the transmission of trauma might be um, also influenced by cultural, psychological, and uh, socioeconomic factors, which is really the main core um, of this study. 
Um, this, these studies also so show that children whose parents experience trauma are more likely to grow up with a parent who is unstable, emotionally distant, um, or anxious. So really to put it into a larger context, the main objective of this study was to synthesize the existing literature on intergenerational trauma in Kosovo and the way that the literature really understand the trauma and the me mechanisms um, of transmission that it um, proposes. Before I continue getting further into the topic, um, I would like to, to do a brief overview uh, of Kosovo uh, in terms of the country context. Um, if you look at this map here, Kosovo is represented in red. It's a very small country and the newest country in Europe. Uh, and it became a country in 2008. Um, so Kosovo is a Parliamentary Republic uh, currently is considered an upper, upper middle income country, and it became a country in 2008. Uh, in terms of population, uh, it sits at uh, just under 2 million. Uh, and in terms of ethnicities, it predominantly is populated by the Albanian population at 90%, um, and then other minorities such as Serbs at about 5 to 7%. Um, and then Bosniaks, Turks, Iranian, Roma, between 3 and 5%. The average life expectancy is um, 76, 77 years old. Um, it's slightly higher for women. Um, and the average age is 29 years old, which is really, um, which shows that it's a really relatively young um, country. Some of the, the challenges that it still faces are um, informal economy. Um, and then uh, diaspora, remittances from diaspora, Kosovo has a large, about 30% of the Kosovar households have at least one of their members living abroad. Um, and it's very customary for these members that are abroad to send money back home. Um, so this is uh, a positive effect for the economy, um, but it remains a challenge of how it's uh, managed and controlled. Corruption uh, remains a challenge, infrastructure, and then education and um, health care. Uh, what is the difference between intergenerational trauma and complex trauma, or what do they have in common, and why choose these two um, topics? Um, and how are they applied in the Kosovo context? So intergenerational trauma has been defined as the cumulative emotional and, and psychological wounding that is transmitted from one generation to the next. An example here in Kosovo would be that children of war survivors may exhibit symptoms of trauma, maybe hypervigilance, anxiety, intrusive memories, um, although they have not directly experienced them themselves. And these symptoms may be influenced by the parents' trauma or potentially with the ongoing socio-political um, climate. Complex trauma, on the other hand, um, refers to uh, this multiple traumatic events or prolonged trauma um, over an extended period, often occurring with, within interpersonal, interpersonal relationships or in settings where safety and security are compromised. Um, again, uh, in terms of Kosovo, uh, an example would be survivors of wartime atrocities in Kosovo, maybe such as mass displacement, torture, or loss of loved ones, may experience a range of complex trauma symptoms, including post-traumatic stress disorder, complex grief, dissociation, or some type of other difficulties with personal um, interpersonal relationships. Why um, is this particularly important in the Kosovo context? Uh, historically, Kosovo has experienced conflict, political instability, um, and social disruptions. Uh, trauma within Kosovo extends beyond individual lifetimes, um, in, in this way leaving lasting imprints across generations. So really these families have experienced a web of intergenerational um, and complex traumas um, within the households, but also uh, within the communities, because trauma is a communal event that is experienced by the community across and developmental stages. Um, challenges to taking a developmental psychopathology approach to the study of cultural trauma um, 
usually refer to the difficulties in recruiting samples of survivors, um, but also children and adolescents that are being raised by adults um, and are themselves um, affected by the event may not be aware that they are um, affected. Uh, genocide survivor, in addition, Genocide survivors also may face stressors um, of being refugees, um, in addition to being part of genocides, um, that are then um, exposed to different types of vulnerabilities, uh, which can lead to further um, um, trauma. What do some of the community statistics in Kosovo show? Uh, what we see is, um, I have chosen here uh, some of the three of the main um, studies in community when it comes to uh, PTSD or any type of post-traumatic trauma uh, since uh, the war in Kosovo um, happened in, in the late uh, 90s. Um, United Nations Development Program uh, through UNDP in 2018 showed that roughly about 30% of the survey population met the criteria for PTSD symptoms. Um, Kosovo Rehabilitation Center for Torture Victims in 2022 also showed that 30% of their clients seeking mental health services uh, reported symptoms that were consistent with PTSD. Um, and International Society for Traumatic Stress Studies, this is a study done a little bit earlier in 2015, showed a significantly high number at 61% um, of the adult Kosovo Albanian pop population that met the diagnostic criteria for the PTSD based on the Harvard um, trauma uh, questionnaire. Um, how do the locals understand trauma? Uh, feeling bereaved is respected as a sign of maturity. So this idea of living the narrative um, is valued, uh, living the narrative of grief, uh, living the narrative of loss um, is valued by the community um, in a sense that the, the, the person that was lost or the struggle that one went through is being carried and it's, it's being remembered. Um, so it's not being lost. Uh, the concept of being strengthened by adversity and trauma has deep roots in, in Western paradigms as well. So this idea that some good can come um, uh, from suffering uh, is also embedded in the Judeo-Christian theology. But more recently, there's psy psychology studies that expand the trauma beyond that. So to, to include not only post-traumatic maladjustment, but also post-traumatic growth. Um, so this idea of um, increased appreciation for life in general after having experienced um, something difficult. Uh, so, so personal strength, maybe uh, a different perspective on changed priorities um, and just richer um, spiritual life. What are the challenges in, in studying uh, complex trauma and intergenerational trauma in Kosovo? Um, initially, the availability of quantitative data. Uh, it was very limited, um, almost non-existent. Um, and this is mainly because this topic is complex uh, and multifaceted in, in nature. Um, it is also challenging to actually measure inter intergenerational trauma through numerical data alone, um, because this involves the transmission of trauma across generations. So it can manifest various psychological, social, and behavioral outcomes, which cannot necessarily be measured by um, numbers. Um, also historical records, um, any other materials that could be archived, um, and sociological studies uh, can shed light on the historical context of trauma in Kosovo, but these documents are not necessarily easy to um, access. Um, just recently, Kosovo opened its doors to the Kosovo Institute for Genocide Studies, um, uh, funded by the government. Um, and this institute will really, the, the aim is to gather all the documents from people who have gone through genocide, um, with the main aim to get access to the Belgrade uh, main um, archives, uh, just to better understand and shed light on what happened, um, especially more recently in, in Kosovo and, and in, in Balkans. 
Currently, the studies that were reviewed um, showed uh, some key mental health issues that are faced by individuals in, in a community in Kosovo as a whole. And this data came from the Agency of, of Statistics in Kosovo as collected um, as of 2022. Um, and these were some of the challenges that are faced currently in, in Kosovo by, by the adult population. Number one is post-traumatic stress disorder followed by depression and anxiety, substance abuse, suicide, childhood trauma and abuse, um, and then limited access to mental health services. And this is really important because we will see in the results section a very uh, similar um, picture um, to this. What are some, um, to, to further discuss the existing literature, what are some of the uh, long-term effects of trauma that we could potentially see? Um, could be things like emotional dysregulation, detachment from thoughts, from memories, um, issues with sleep, domestic violence, again, substance abuse and disorders, intrusive thoughts, triggers and flashbacks, and it could also be physical um, symptoms. Um, again, the biological impact of trauma, um, like I said earlier, uh, I was not particularly focused on this part. Um, however, something that um, uh, interests me a lot is this idea of um, cell memory theory which suggests that memories can be stored at a cellular level in individual cells outside of the brain. Um, and then uh, further, the, these traumatic memories on past events might be stored in the body um, on a cellular level and as such be passed on to um, younger uh, generations. Now, why did I choose the ecological systems theory um, to analyze um, a complex issue such as intergenerational and complex traumas? Uh, the reason why I chose uh, the ecological systems theory um, is that I um, I like the idea that it uh, it it focuses on a holistic approach. Uh, at when when it looks at a particular um, issue at hand. So the ecological perspective proposes that individuals are influenced by and interact with multiple systems within their environment. Um, so in the sense, intergenerational trauma will not be analyzed through one element or one perspective alone, uh, but in a holistic approach. Um, and really, um, the ecological systems theory in this case then looks at trauma as not solely an individual phenomenon, but it is influenced by various environmental factors, including family, community, culture, socioeconomic uh, conditions, and also political um, contexts. Uh, the ecological perspective also underscores the interconnectedness of individuals with their environments. Um, and looking at the different types of approaches to trauma um, analysis, but also uh, possible um, interventions. This is, a, to the left, you see a chart of this, what transgenerational transmission of historical uh, trauma could look like. This diagram shows um, some of the hypothetical pathways through which the effects of trauma and loss may be transmitted across generations um, in different multiple uh, uh, levels. So here you can see the epigenic alterations, uh, changes in individuals' um, psychological well-being, self-esteem, um, family functioning, community integrity, and cultural identity, which I will um, uh, talk about in just a little bit. In terms of methodology, how was the study um, conducted uh, specifically? So the study utilized the scoping um, review, uh, systematic review, and ma meta analysis extensions for scoping reviews, known as a PRISMA method. Um, Articles that were included uh, usually, well, were limited to um, diaspora individuals who were displaced in their country of origin due to war, maybe some other political uh, or conflict um, uh, or, or mass movements. Um, the experience of trauma was 
collective. Uh, children of offspring did not experience political trauma directly themselves. Um, and the articles were not uh, peer reviewed. So these, any articles that um, were part of, of, of this, they were not included. So they, they were excluded. Um, sorry, they were included in the study. Studies that were excluded were studies that were theoretical in nature, or maybe they focused on populations um, outside of Kosovo um, and focused solely on biological or epigenic um, transmissions. Uh, methodology used the uh, quantitative, qual uh, qualitative, and mixed methods designs. They were all appropriate to be included. Um, and then all the major databases were utilized to um, get the, um, the studies. Um, search results. Um, then all the articles were uploaded on EndNote. Um, any du du duplicates were removed. Um, and then the remaining articles um, were uh, uploaded in the review uh, software. In the end, this led to initial identification of uh, 1,210 articles generated across all engines. Um, and out of all of these studies, none of them focused uh, directly on intergenerational trauma, but they had elements that could fit potentially um, into this topic. These were some of the key words that were used uh, to when searching for the articles uh, that could potentially relate uh, to intergenerational trauma in Kosovo. Um, and this is really what the selection um, of the final uh, documents looked like. Um, so after the duplicates were removed, uh, we ended up with uh, 1,103 articles. Um, we ended up excluding 884 Um articles. Um, and then after uh, careful filtering, we ended up using 45 uh, journal articles for the for the study. So this is the flow chart of study uh, selection based on the PRISMA method. Okay. One thing that um, has not been uh, done yet, but I am exploring um, with some of my colleagues is to use a waffle chart. So this is into a testing phase just to see another uh, perspective on what this would look like. Waffle charts usually represent um, count data of specific study characteristics uh, by coding different words. Um, so an example here in color, you see that the multicolored flow chart demonstrates counts of different uh, intergenerational pathways. Uh, tested by quantitative studies. So this is something that I'm interested in and I want, uh, and I'm exploring um, in, in applying. Now, what were some of the emerging themes uh, in these studies? Um, concept of trauma among Kosovars. Uh, this is one thing that we saw in several studies where it is perceived that only crazy people see a psychologist or a psychiatrist um, Although that is changing recently, this is something that um, continuously showed up. People who suffer from mental illnesses have a weak um, character. This was the second one. Um, other emerging themes were gender roles and cultural norms, suicide, drug use, domestic violence, mental health, specifically referring to veteran mental health, um, and child labor and violence, which I will go into detail um, individually. So essentially, this is what the results look like. Um, this is how the emerging themes fit into the ecological systems approach. Um, the first step is the individual. In, in this sense, we use the self or the community um, with the outcome of psychological impact. So is it resilience, uh, be it resilience or coping? Um, microsystem then um, focuses on family, peers, and school. Uh, the emerging themes that fell under this were domestic violence, drug use, child abuse, mental health, and suicide. The meso system um, looks at family and education systems. Um, here we see uh, complex trauma, intergenerational trauma, and historical trauma prevail. Exosystem looks at the career, neighborhood, and the government. This is where we saw child labor um, issues, violence, trust, distrust in the government, and again, historical trauma. 
And then the macro system <clears throat> where culture, ethnicity, and socioeconomic status fall, this is where we saw challenges with cultural identity, questioning ethnicity and nationality, and also structural uh, inequities. Um, I I, I'm going to review each of these um, systems individually just to give a little bit more um, context. So if you look here, the first system, um, it, it's in that first loop uh, there, just outside of the individual. Um, this is really where domestic violence um, dominated in, in our study. This idea of family, peers, and school <clears throat> Some of the major issues here came with domestic violence. And this could be for several um, reasons. Um, families in Kosovo still uh, largely live in, uh, Kosovo is still a collectivist society, so families um, still tend to live um, in larger households where when the son gets married, they are still very likely to bring a wife at home and children. So you have three generation, um, households, which could create, could lead to, um, um, violence. Uh, there are issues with women's inheritance, although the um, Kosovo's uh, legal system um, is fully in place in, in terms of what women are entitled to inherit from their families or through marriage. Um, there are still issues um, at hand where the largely um, still uh, men inherit most um, of the, the, the family's um, ownership. Uh, there are issues with women's employment and education, and I'm going to provide some data just um, in the next slide. Um, it wasn't that long ago that uh, women and the families um, were married via arranged marriages um, as, as near as um, a grandmothers. Uh, there are challenges with gender roles. Um, Kosovo still remains a, a patriarchal uh, society. Um, uh, there are uh, issues of intergenerational care. Um, elderly in Kosovo are still largely cared for um, uh, in-house. And so a lot of this work is being done by the wife um, of the son. Uh, that, so they are taking care of the children. They are taking care of the elderly in the household. And as a result, they are not available for um, the, the labor market. So they are less likely to work. Um, and then there could be issues with in-laws um, as they can be abusers as well. Um, as such, we have uh, the, the, the next uh, theme, emerging theme was um, issues with mental health, um, issues with suicide and issues um, with drug use. To elaborate a little bit um, on the domestic uh, violence, um, here you can see um, the, the map on the left shows the traditional family system in, in, in Europe. Um, and you see that Kosovo falls uh, under the, the, the red um, highlight, which shows that um, it's part of a community family, which means that all adult children and their families uh, live with parents um, and strict uh, equal inheritance is uh, customary. This is mainly for, for men. Um, about 20% of women participate in the labor force. Uh, only about 11% of 15 to 64 year old women are contributing to the economy through employment. They are also more likely to be part of the informal economy where they are being um, paid uh, out of pocket. Uh, women earn about around 74 cents for every euro a man earns in Kosovo. Um, only about 18% of women and girls have property in their name and only about 23 uh, inherit uh, property. Uh, currently, as it stands, the law on elections requires a quota of 30% of all candidates to be uh, women. Um, and then the law on gender equality in Kosovo um, actually requires the presentation of a minimum of 50% of women in government um, decision-making uh, bodies. Um, this is what um, employment uh, of women looks like. Um, you can see here the working age population and then economically active women are very low at about 20%, economically inactive about 80%, um, a very small uh, number employed, large number um, unemployed. 
Uh, in terms of uh, police reports based on um, female victims, you see here that from 2010, the number of um, domestic violence uh, cases has gone up um, significantly. Uh, in terms of domestic violence and murders, um, in comparison to the Balkans, you see here that uh, crimes committed against women who were murdered um, in Kosovo were 100% done by firearms in comparison to other um, neighboring countries. You also see that in Kosovo, the number of domestic violence cases, like I said earlier, has gone up. Um, however, the number of uh, prosecution um, is either unavailable uh, or is only at about 50%, which causes um, further um, challenges. Uh, here you again, you see the upward curve of domestic violence cases being reported to the police. This is from the police data. Um, here you see the number of domestic violence cases based on gender. You see in, in yellow are women uh, and in blue are men. So it's significantly higher. Uh, but also the number of domestic violence perpetrators um, here you see in blue is largely uh, a male. So it's clear to say that this is uh, male on female um, violence. Okay, the next theme, uh, mental health, uh, we see in the last 17 years in Kosovo see a raise of 35% um, in terms of mental health cases. Uh, WHO global reporting shows that um, about globally one in uh, six um, on average uh, suffers from mental, mental health um, disorders. In Kosovo, it's about uh, one in eight. Um, and the majority show PTSD symptoms at 53%, um, general depression at 25, anxiety at about 9%, and clinical depression at about 8%. Um, veterans, in addition, show symptoms of revenge at about 15%, uh, and a hate or um, hate crime at about 16.7%. Uh, um, currently, only about 1.2% of the Kosovo health budget goes um, towards uh, mental health. Um, when it comes to suicide, a little bit over 1,000 people have committed suicide since the um, end of the war. Uh, here we're talking about uh, reported cases. On average, currently in Kosovo, there's about one suicide per week, um, three attempts um, per week. 70% uh, of the suicide arts are committed by men, and the most affected age group is 26 to 30 years old. Um, Kosovo still does have the lowest suicide rate uh, in Europe. Um, however, uh, we see a huge increase since 2000 at about 122%. Uh, in comparison to 1983, uh, and since 2001, um, over 700% increase um, in, in suicide cases, which is needless to say is very alarming. Um, this is what that looks like uh, on, a, on, a, on a graph. In yellow, we see the numbers of suicides per year, um, and in red um, are the attempts um, for suicide from 2001 until 2018. Uh, we significantly see more men commit suicide. This is also um, in line with uh, uh, global statistics. However, in Kosovo, studies show that this uh, is largely due to difficult economic and social situations and just changing norms, psycho-emotional context, um, and potentially loss of self-confidence. Um, some studies also connected this with the Kosovo uh, tradition in general, the man uh, is still uh, considered the main source of uh, income and someone who bears all the burden to um, of the finances for the household. So the idea of failing in this case um, could lead to different um, psycho-emotional uh, uh, pressures. Um, 
Also, over 90% of suicides of veterans were committed uh, as a result um, of war. Drug use was another theme that emerged. Um, the data here was taken from um, 2019 statistical report from a, a center called Labyrinth, which is a, a rehab center. Um, uh, between 2002 and 2019, there were a little bit over a thousand drug users registered at this center. Um, again, largely men, 92% and about 8% women, average age 28 years old. Um, and the statistics here showed that the um, average age of when young people started to use drugs was 18. 63% uh, have completed high school, 33% were unemployed, um, and 25% have experienced an overdose, which is a significant uh, number. Uh, the data also showed that cocaine was the most uh, used drug in Kosovo, and, uh, and there was an estimate of 35,000 active um, drug users. Next, we move to the next system known as the meso system. Um, again, here family dominates, um, but again, um, in addition, the educational system. So this is where we saw more of the complex intergenerational and historical um, traumas emerge. Um, it's important here to note a little bit of the historical context um, in Kosovo. So uh, this really may have started during World uh, War II, if we are referring to the grandparents. But in the early 90s, there was a breakup of Yugoslavia leading to the Kosovo War in 1998-1999. Um, this uh, entailed widespread violence, um, displacement, there were human rights um, violations, and they left deep scars in the collective memory of the Kosovar people. Uh, as a result, uh, there was political instability, um, further ethnic tensions, socioeconomic challenges, um, and other types of trauma that were experienced by the population as a whole. Um, so this effect of conflict and war and political instability really has left uh, effects on multiple um, generations. But what's really important is the how does this discussion of trauma, uh, it, how is it carried out in families um, now? Uh, trauma in Kosovo and the, the discussions about trauma in Kosovo are really embedded in everyday life. And really they shape the collective identity, the beliefs and, and behaviors. Um, the memory of past trauma is also carried on through cultural uh, rituals, memorials, or storytelling. But there's still stigma around um, discussing the survivors, especially of the war um, on trauma. This is just a brief, I just prepared a brief overview to show how Kosovo as a country uh, was under different empires that could have led to other types of, of, of trauma, starting from the second century um, all the way to 2008. So I think a lot of this trauma here that we're, we're discussing in terms of a historical context, we can either uh, focus from 1912 and on or 1940s uh, and on, which would uh, include grandparents um, and great-grandparents. Um, during 1999-1998, uh, during the war in Kosovo, Kosovo faced a huge migration uh, wave and displacement. Uh, right prior to uh, the war, uh, Kosovo in the early 90s uh, experienced um, other types of diaspora and migration um, waves. Currently, about 900,000 um, family members live outside of Kosovo, which is a significant number considering that Kosovo has a population of about um, 2 million. Okay. Uh, and in addition, as a result of war, there were uh, there are families who have never found their family members who have disappeared um, during the war. And this is estimated at about 1,700 uh, family members. Okay, um, just a few more um, statistics related to the Kosovo War. Uh, for context, uh, there were about 20,000 deaths 
uh, and a little bit over 1 million um, or 1.5 million um, Kosovars that were displaced during that time. Internally, about 400,000. Um, and there are about 30,000 people who lived in, in the gray zone. Ultimately, about, about a little bit over 850,000 um, Kosovo citizens um, became uh, refugees during that time. This map shows where the people um, of Kosovo had moved to during the early 90s and as a result of Kosovo. Um, so you, you see here that Kosovo Albania holds uh, over 1 million population each. Um, and the next country with the largest Kosovo population is Switzerland, Italy, um, Turkey, and, uh, and uh, Greece. These are some personal pictures um, of war. Um, my family and I were uh, present on the first picture when we were displaced from the city. And at that time, we did not know where we were going to. Um, and then the second picture is us uh, when we arrived uh, in New Jersey in April of 1999. So that's my parents and my sisters. Um, third system, um, uh, exosystem looks at the career, neighborhood, um, and government. Uh, here we saw issues with child labor and violence, uh, and then distrust in government. And again, historical trauma, um, came into play. Uh, we see that the child's, uh, incidents in schools has really, um, on the rise since 2021. Um, only in 2023 alone, there were 93 incidents, uh, in, in the first two months of the year. There are issues with the Roma children, um, uh, with child labor, lack of education. They're not going to school. They're working from a very young age. They could, they are very, uh, likely to be, um, abused and, uh, possibly also trafficked. Uh, and in two, as a result, in 2019, the uh, Kosovo Assembly ad uh, adopted a child protection uh, law where um, because of the statistics show that over 60% of children between ages 1 and 14 uh, were reported to have experienced some type of a physical punishment of psychological um, aggression um, towards them. So these are some statistics that show that um, uh, in ages between 5 and 14, about 9% of children are working, 95% uh, are attending school, and almost 12% um, are going to school and also working. And lastly, um, I want to talk about the macro system where culture and ethical identity um, uh, uh, are interwined. So here we see challenges with cultural identity, ethnicity, nationality. This is where social inequities come into play, social with veterans, um, and gender or roles, which could also be very much interwined, um, with the domestic, um, violence. So when it comes to cultural identity, Kosovo became a country in 2008. The nationality of Kosovars or self-identification of nationality is Albanian. So when the term Kosovo and Kosovar was created and the new flag was proposed, a lot of Kosovar had questions about what does this mean? Who are we? Um, and uh, how do we fit into this notion of, of being um, Albanian? Uh, we also see structural inequities uh, as a result of uh, history of conflict, displacement, and socioeconomical instability, and they are manifested in various forms. So currently, there are economic uh, disparities between families, um, different access to resources, different access to educational opportunities and healthcare, um, and also representation uh, in governmental structures. Uh, when it comes to veterans, the status, rights, and well-being of veterans uh, is currently uh, a serious concern in Kosovo, uh, as they often face challenges related to physical and mental health, uh, social integration, uh, recognition for their sacrifices, and also economic um, opportunities. Um, and then finally, gender roles. Um, as Kosovo is developing further and creating its own identity, 
we see that there's a lot of challenges of the meaning of masculinity, which was really important in this region. Uh, and what does that mean? And how is that shifting and changing in, in terms of societal norms and social values in Kosovo? Um, traditional notions of masculinity in Kosovo and also in the Balkans usually emphasize traits such as strength, dominance, and, and provider roles. Um, however, with these uh, evolving social dynamics, um, and with this increased awareness of gender equality and women's rights, um, this is being um, questioned and um, essentially shaken. So how, how, how do these factors interplay and how do they ultimately contribute to trauma? Uh, socioeconomic factors um, uh, through poverty and employment, uh, lack of, in, in some areas of basic uh, resources so they really contribute to stress and instability within the community um economic disparities uh, exaggerate social inequalities leading to increased vulnerability um particularly towards minorities and mar marginalized um, populations in terms of cultural norms and values uh, cultural beliefs and practices health seeking behaviors and coping mechanisms um, also stigma of mental health um, and sort of request for uh, professional help remains a challenge. Uh, political instability usually is due to historical conflicts, political tensions, government challenges, um, and then displacement and migration through forced displacement, loss of homes, um, and also other um, environmental stressors. Now, second part of this study, I'm hoping to carry out at some point in 2025, 26. Um, and here I will need a larger uh, a team uh, and more financial resources uh, because I would like in part to, uh, to collect stories and to be more um, involved in directly in the community itself. Um, and some of the main themes that I want uh, to look at are, well, the first one is the legacy of war. So here, the idea is to collect family stories, displacement stories, um, trauma stories, uh, and then to discuss with parents and children how they were impacted, what do the uh, family mental health statistics look like, but also ultimately highlight the family's journeys um, towards healing. Um, again, collect more personal narratives in terms of resilience within adversity, uh, how, um, how they, how this, how they've experienced growing up in Kosovo post war, um, different case studies. So I would like to examine, um, different communities, uh, and, and, and how, how they, um, essentially how they were impacted, um, as a whole, uh, by, by trauma. Um, and then there were a lot of initiatives in Kosovo, um, after the war, uh, when it comes to healing through art of ex and expression. So I would also like to collect stories directly um, to that. So what did Kosovo do um, to tackle this issue so far? And uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see that actually quite a bit was done in this um, sense. Uh, mental health services have expanded. And um, this is done with aim to provide counseling, therapy, or psychological support um, to individuals affected by trauma. A lot of these services are, are free of charge. Uh, different community support networks, family has really played a huge role uh, in this context. Uh, this is one of the positive aspects of living in a collectivist society and collectivist culture. Um, different educational programs, different schools and educational institutions in Kosovo have implemented programs to address trauma and to promote mental health awareness to students, teachers, and also parents. Um, like I mentioned earlier, cultural, cultural and artistic ex expression. So cultural activities, including music, dance, theater, uh, visual arts. There are a lot of grants also available, um, especially to youth, uh, for these, uh, activities. Kosovo has also uh, participated in the tra transitional justice process, um, has worked closely with international uh, institutions and organizations, um, 
has really worked with international community to fine tune legal and policy frameworks uh, when it comes to gender uh, equality, human rights. Um, one thing that remains in, in process is interfaith dialogue and uh, reconciliation. What are some of the recommendations and future directions for um, research on intergenerational trauma in Kosovo? Uh, there's more need for longitudinal studies um, to also explore the intersection of trauma with other factors and also to investigate innovative interventions and approaches um, to trauma. Advocacy for policy changes and resource allocation. Uh, Kosovo needs to advocate for the development and implementation of trauma-informed policies and programs, lobby for increased funding, and collaborate with policymakers, NGOs, and international organizations. But there's this huge need for importance for continued dialogue and, and collaboration among all stakeholders to foster ongoing dialogue and collaboration among mental health professionals, researchers, community leaders, policymakers, survivors, and other um, stakeholders, all with the aim of empowering survivors um, and communities. So in conclusion, um, I do want to know that intergenerational trauma, again, studies show that it is transmitted through generations and it is influenced by multitude of factors, especially his historical, cultural, political, and socioeconomic. Um, and it is a holistic um, event. So it is really important to acknowledge the interplay of these various factors uh, when uh, uh, studying intergenerational trauma, not only in post the Balkans, but also in, in, in other um, communities. Uh, thank you very much. This is it. Um, thank you all.